<laughs> You're getting all the real world today. <laughs> Hey there friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a mile long to-do list and I'm hoping to get some of it done and tackled with you. We are hoping to do a few projects around the house, some freezer meal prep hopefully, and then also some other kitchen projects and preservation projects. So normally you guys see me prepping stuff for the freezer, so you're probably wondering what all of this frozen stuff is doing sitting here. Well, I think I talked about it in my little section on planning out some of my fall food preservation canning projects in my last video. I think it was my last video. Oh, the video before, I believe. And one of them is something that we've sort of invented in our house and we call it berry sauce. And what happened was, I think it was two years ago, I had um, a bunch of frozen berries, mostly strawberries and blueberries that year that till fall were from the year before, they needed to be used up, something needed to be done with them. And so I just took and made applesauce or used applesauce, mixed it in and we made a flavored applesauce. So simple to do um, in a great way to use up any frozen fruit that you might have and put it on the shelf. You don't have to worry about it getting frostbitten or freezer burnt, whatever you like to call it. So I have a lot here. I actually went down to pull stuff out knowing I had some blueberries and strawberries and this bag of the dark sweet cherries. And this stuff has just been in the freezer for quite a while and just really needs to be used up. I actually also have a bag of peaches in here um, from last year that can be mixed into all of this as well. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, I decided I wanna make two roaster fulls of sauce. So I'm going to divide all of what I have here in half. So I have like two gallon bags of blueberries. I have four of cherries, um, of these cherries that I bagged up last year with the intention to do cherry pie filling. It never happened and they just sat in my freezer. So we're gonna do like two bags of the cherries in one batch, one bag of the blueberries in one batch, and then we will use all of the rest of it. Hey friends, we're gonna take a quick break from today's video to tell you about this week's sponsor, Craftsy. Craftsy is your online resource for all things creative. You all know how much I enjoy creative activities. I do loads of DIYs here on my channel, including cooking skills and other homemaking techniques. Craftsy classes include step-by-step -step instruction plus helpful downloadable resources to make learning easy. Learn directly from the experts with classes taught by experienced award-winning instructors who share their professional techniques that will take your skills to the next level. Class topics include knitting, crocheting, quilting, sewing, painting, drawing, cooking, baking, cake decorating, paper crafting, which is something I personally love, and so many of you already know that, photography, gardening, and so much more. Learn anywhere and on the go and watch on your own time with classes that are broken down into short, easy to follow lessons. Craftsy has classes to fit any interest and skill level. Members get unlimited access to thousands of inspiring classes, exciting projects, and mouth-watering recipes. Personally, I have been wanting to learn how to do more knitting. I've picked up little bits and pieces here and there through the years, but I really wanna dive in to learning how to do it better. So I know that Craftsy can help me out with this skill and so much more. It's something that I am really excited to delve more into now that we are heading into the school year and cooler months where I may have more time to dive into deepening my skill level on these subjects. Right now, the first thousand people to click on the link in the description box are going to get an entire year of premium membership from Craftsy for $1.49. 
I am all about new learning tools and I am so excited about the platform Crossy. So my plan is to use my big roaster and this is something that my parents, when they moved to Florida last year, my mom did a lot of specialty catering and I requested one of her roasters that she's used as a birthday gift and she was like of course i'll give you one of my roasters and so this is one of my absolute favorite kitchen tools it looks huge but whenever you're doing food preservation usually everything comes in large quantities and in bulk and it's nice to have something big like this and on the front i can um, change the temperature so what i'm going to do i think this is the method to my madness i have a lot of apples in our refrigerator in the basement um, I recently went and did a big pickup at a local orchard and I'm not sure if I'm going to get more. I was going to kind of see how this goes. I'm also freeze drying some apples as well. So um, I am going to put all of my berries. I'm calling them berries because this isn't actually all berries, but because it's berry sauce in our house, call, putting all of my other fruits besides apples in here and we're gonna see how much space we have. I'm gonna start it on low and then I'm going to get out my apple corers slash peelers and I'm, my daughters are actually asking to help with this too. We have two of them so I'll probably set them up here and we will just fill this guy um, with peeled and cored apples. So we are not going to have to do anything through like any type of strainer or Victorian strainer. You know what I'm talking about. A lot of people use that for applesauce. I've done that in the past. Um, but since I'm going to be peeling and coring these, I'm going to be able to literally cook up all the fruit and then blend it um, in. I'll probably start out with my immersion blender, blending it in here and then run it through my high powered blender to make sure it's nice and smooth. Um, so I think that's what I'm going to start out doing. We're going to get the fruit in the bottom of this roaster. All right. I actually just was doing something else for a few minutes and this is already warm. So this is probably going to sizzle. I'm going to put just a little bit of water in the bottom here. I'm trying to avoid adding too much water to this because I don't want my sauce. Uh, my sauce is already going to be pretty watery because of all of this fruit being frozen. And so um, I don't want to add too much more water to it. I may even have to cook the sauce for a little while to get some of the liquid off of it. We'll wait and see. So these cherries from Costco, if you've ever gotten them, oh, they smell so good and they're just so beautiful. Um, they are already pitted and then I also pitted the other cherries that I bagged up. And there is no rhyme or reason to this. You could do one type of, like if you're gonna go buy fruit specifically to do a flavored applesauce, um, you could do one type, you could do strawberry applesauce, you know, you could do whatever. And this is very similar to those packs, like the baby food packs where they flavor, um, put like fruits and vegetables. And that's the other thing you could do is you could put other vegetables and things like that. But just keep in mind that as you add vegetables, um, I know I'm being really dangerous with this knife. <laughs> um, as you add vegetables, it may change how you need to can the applesauce. Um, if it's not as high in sugar and um, acidity as fruit is. And then also along with using different types of fruit, you also are going to want to test taste this in case you wanna add cane sugar or something like that. Just because depending on the types of fruit you use um, is going to depend on how sweet the sauce ends up being. Like I said, all of these cherries are pitted as well. You would not wanna add just regular cherries <laughs> with the pit in to something like this. Now, this is going to start out pretty piled up and it's going to cook down and so are the apples as we go to. So even if you've got a nice big pile, it's no big deal. All right, now I'm gonna put the lid on this. I have it on low. 
I'm gonna keep it on low just to start to cook it together and we'll get out our apple stuff. All right, so we have our little apple station all set up here and we're actually putting three different types of apples into this. Right now the girls are working on um, Yellow Delicious. I have some Yellow Delicious right now. I have some Macintosh and I have some Jonathan apples. And we're putting all three types in this just to give it a nice mixed flavor. And I found that the Macintosh, which is what I have right here, these apples, um, they're a softer apple. Are you having a hard time starting yeah, it? It's, it's not Sometimes what helps is if you take your thumb, put it on, Hazley, look here. So, no, let me show you. Put it on here and start it here. Whoop, there, yeah, go ahead, push it, push it forward. Oh, Oops. No, it fell off. Oh, that's because you're not. There we go. Sometimes if it helps, go ahead, push it, push it forward. Push it all, no, push it. Yep. Sometimes it helps to help the peeler get started. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So go ahead. There. It, there we go. Kinda. Here. It's not. It's, like, it's, it's rock. There you go. Go. Go ahead. You got it now. Go ahead. I think you should be able to push it through. Go. No, let it. Let the peeler do its thing. Mhm. Mm there you go. Yep. So I've found that the softer apples, like the Macintosh, do not do very well through the peeler, cranker, Johnny Appleseed, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I'm going to actually hand peel these and cut them. And the girls are going to work on the Yellow Delicious and the Jonathan apples. Um, and then we're just going to, as we load them up, uh, we will throw them all in. And what I'm doing, they're handing me the peeled and sliced apple and I'm just taking my knife and cutting that into slices so that they cook up a bit faster. You have a little bit of a, a bad one? Okay, I'll do that one, yep. And this is a, such a fun job for the girls. They so enjoy doing this and beg to do it and they love that I have two of them because they often like to do races, right Kylia? Races are fun. Um, and they realize where the knives are on these things. We've had their safety lessons with it all, but it's so great to get your kids in the kitchen helping you with stuff because it teaches them things that they can then pass on to their children, just like my mom did for me. And we have been busy working on my fall preservation list. Kylia, do you wanna say what we did this week? What's something else that we worked on? What did we roast? Roast? Yeah, what did we roast in the oven? Pumpkin seeds. Pumpkin seeds, that's right. So we roasted up the pumpkins. I canned the pumpkin. I have a video oh, on okay. how to do that. Yep, that's fine. Just has a few little brown spots, but that's okay because we're gonna make it into applesauce. So they'll just get cooked right in. Um, I have a video on how to can pumpkin, and so I will leave that linked below because that's a question that I get this time of year is how we do the good old fashioned, traditional Mennonite Amish way of canning pumpkin. Okay, so we have a nice big uh, 9 by 13 pan full of apples that are ready to go in here. And I have this on a very, very low setting because I'm just pretty much trying to melt the frozen berries at this point, at least until we have a nice pile of apples. And I'm gonna bring that pan of apples over and start stirring it in. If you get a roaster, you want a nice long handled spoon to be able to do this type of thing. So our first pan of apples, and it really didn't take us very long to do this and this will get cooked down. The nice thing about this roaster and most roasters 
is they have a lid that's very dome shaped like this. So you can really pile apples up um, even when you're doing apple butter or something like that because they do cook down. So you're able to really load it up like this. And I'm gonna turn the heat up just a little bit here because it doesn't seem to be melting these as fast as I wanted it to. So I think we're going to, oh, there's a little peel. Um, I think that we are going to do at least one or two more pans like I just did, at least until some of it has cooked down. So we'll see till we have another pan done what this is looking like. All right, after all of those apples, I needed a little coffee break, so I made myself a nice big cup of coffee mm. with extra cream today because it is a big day. So I have started some bacon in my air fryer on this side of the kitchen. We are about to hard boil some eggs, but before we do that, I'm gonna check in on how we're doing here. So seeing the apples turning brown is really a good sign. That means that they are starting to get a little of that steam that's coming up from the bottom. And this is my third, was the third pan of apples um, that I am putting in here. And so we filled that nine by 13 about three times along with obviously all the other fruit that's in here. So I'm just gonna continue to kind of pause as I'm working on other projects today and stir this. And then once the apples are a little bit softer, I'm gonna get my immersion blender out and we will blend it all together. So one question I know I'm gonna get is why don't you just leave the skin on the apple? And some people do. My sister-in-law, that's how she makes her applesauce. She's totally okay with it. I've tried it um, and for some reason, my, for myself and I know for at least two of my daughters, we can really taste the texture difference with that skin in there. It just creates another texture um, that I personally don't really care for. Now in this with all the other fruit, I have not done this with cherries yet. This will be my first time doing it with cherries. We may end up with a little bit of a texture from the cherry skin, we will see. So we'll just wait and see how it goes. Um, but you never know till you try. Okay, so I stirred it up. I kind of got some from the bottom. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna cover it up again. Can't turn the heat up too high because you're gonna end up with burnt pieces of fruit on the bottom of the roaster. So we gotta kind of work with it. So my parents are actually coming for dinner tonight. And the reason it's so special, like I mentioned earlier, is that they moved to Florida to work at a boys camp. Um, it's a wilderness boys camp and the boys live there year round. And so they have different jobs there and they love being able to serve in mission like that um, and just help other people. So we don't always get to see them and we miss them so, so much. We go to see them um, pretty regularly or we try to and it so happens that they had some events that are tied to the camp up here in Pennsylvania this week so we are going to get to see them a couple of times and they were trying to spend an evening at each of me and my siblings houses I have three younger brothers I'm the oldest in the family and so being able to see obviously us kids and grandkids is really um, special. So for supper tonight, um, my husband decided to pull some steaks out of the freezer because we do get beef done. And um, so I'm in charge of sides. It's awesome when he does that. He cooks almost as much as I do. I know some people probably don't believe that because they see me cook a lot here on my channel, but ooh, I just got against that. Um, but he does cook a whole, whole lot. So I decided to go ahead and make scalp potatoes or scallop potatoes or funeral potatoes. There's lots of names for them, but basically they're kind of like a baked cheesy potato dish. Some people shred them. I like to slice them. And then I'm also going to do a seven layer salad. And if I have time in my day today, um, I may do an apple salad. We'll see if that happens um, since I have so many apples and it's something that my mom really enjoys. So we are excited to see them. It's been a little bit since we've seen them. It's probably been, let's see, 
It has been about a month, about a month or so since we were in Florida last. And so we're very much looking forward to this evening. And um, so I'm kind of trying to get some meal prepping squeezed in between the other things I'm doing today. Okay, so our bacon bits are done in the air fryer. That's gonna be for the seven layer salad. And then my hard boiled eggs are also done. I did a few extra hard boiled eggs because I've been meaning to get some red bee eggs started. That's something that we really enjoy, but I don't always remember to get them done. And it takes about a week for them to sit in the red beet, the pickled red beet juice to be a more of like a pickled egg. And we really enjoy that. But like I said, I just forget about it quite often. So I thought, well, I'm hard boiling some eggs. I'll go ahead and do that. We are doing well with the cooking and stirring of the apples. We're getting closer and closer to being able to blend some of that. So we're gonna need cheese for two of, or both of the dishes that we are prepping for dinner. I'm gonna do a pound of Colby Jack. I don't know if I'm gonna need the entire pound for the seven layer salad. And then I have a pound of sharp cheddar cheese that I'm gonna be putting in to the scallop potatoes. I grabbed my food processor because we're all needing to shred the cheese. I don't always get it out to shred cheese, but we have enough going on with this project. I think it'll work. I also have the potatoes over here that I'm gonna slice with my food processor as well. And I do get questions about this processor and it was something that I was on the fence for quite some time because I'm someone that I don't mind doing things by hand. Don't always need the special equipment but I am so glad that I have it and I really do love this food processor. One of the reasons I like it is because I can, ooh, that really shone bright. Um, I can adjust the slice on the slicing disc so I'm able to make a really thin slice or really thick slice, which is very convenient. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this stuff shredded up and we're gonna slice the potatoes and then we will start making the white sauce that's gonna go in between the potatoes and cheese in our scalloped potatoes. All right, to make the cream sauce that we're gonna use in the scalloped potatoes, we're gonna start out with some butter. I think I have made <laughs> this type of a sauce many, many times on this channel because this is the base also for homemade cream of dot, dot, dot soup. So cream of chicken, cream of mushroom, cream of celery. It's all, it all starts out with some butter, some flour and milk. And so that's pretty much what we are creating here. I don't usually buy cream of dot, dot, dot soups, um, but on occasion I have. I just prefer to make them at home because they're really simple to whip together. So we're gonna melt this butter, we'll add the flour in, and I'll show you the next step. Okay, our butter is melted and I'm going to use gluten-free flour. I use gluten-free flour to do this. Do I always use gluten-free flour in our house in case you're new around here? No. We have some that are gluten sensitive and so I do a mixture of stuff. So we're gonna add about a fourth cup of gluten-free flour. Sometimes I add a little extra to these types of sauces because I think that it doesn't thicken quite as good as regular flour. Um, so I'll just add in another little dash of flour but it still kind of gets pasty. Um, just like the regular flour does. And I think you can see that in there. And I know that's a terrible sound for most of you. I am sorry. 
<laughs> just the sound it makes. And we are now going to use three cups of whole milk. So we're gonna whisk and work at the same time um, as I'm pouring this in, slowly working at it, and then it will eventually thicken. To this, I'm going to add some salt, pepper, and some parsley. And again, this recipe is an old Mennonite recipe, so it will be typed out in the description box below if you would like to make this yourself. Make some good old cheesy scalloped potatoes. And it's gonna kind of thin out a little bit whenever you whisk it like this. And then as it heats up the milk, it will thicken again. But you wanna be near it and you wanna be watching it as you go. Okay, we're gonna do around a teaspoon of salt. Around a fourth teaspoon of pepper and a teaspoon or two of dried parsley. All right, our berry sauce is actually pretty well to the point of ready, being ready, soft enough to blend with the immersion blender. But we're gonna assemble our um, scalp potatoes. And I just remembered I have some onions that, if you guys remember, I dice onions and I usually put them in the freezer, either in vacuum bags or just freezer bags. And I got some out to thaw out, so I'm gonna grab those out of some warm water. Okay, so we are gonna use these onions to layer in to our potatoes. Now, the potatoes turned a little bit discolored um, brown because I didn't put them in water right away while I was making the sauce, but no foul, no harm. We are good to go. I'm gonna pull you in a little closer so you can see how we're gonna layer this up. All right, so on the bottom, I'm just gonna put potatoes. I don't put anything on the bottom of the pan because it's all going to melt and end up in the bottom and everywhere in the pan, so it's not really a big deal. Um, that you don't have sauce directly on the bottom of the pan. And you could be really fancy with this, but I'm not too worried about it. I'm just going to go ahead and layer these in. Now this is going to take around an hour and a half to bake. So I'm keeping that in mind of when I want to put this in the oven. Um, so I'll have to do that here after a while. And you could also, slice onions, that's usually what I do with this, but since I have the diced frozen onions, I'm just gonna go ahead and use them. They are not totally thawed out, which is really not a big deal because these are this is gonna be in the oven so long that those onions are gonna go ahead and bake up and they will be perfectly fine. So we're gonna take some of the onions here and just sprinkle them across. Now, you may not like onions, but if you like scalloped potatoes, it is one of the main flavors that makes scalloped potatoes taste like scalloped potatoes. So you could also just go really heavy on some onion powder in the cream sauce and you may get a similar flavor. So just sprinkling this across. And now I actually like to put the sauce more against the potatoes and then put the cheese on. So I like to grab a big fat spoon like this and um, sort of skim across the sauce and then pour it across the potatoes. Oh, this smells so good. It's been a while since I've made scalloped potatoes and I know my family's gonna be really excited to have some. Now I don't have exact measurements when it comes to the cheese on this. So I'm just grabbing and sprinkling until I think it looks good. <laughs> so I don't think I will use this entire pound. We'll probably have a little bit left over to throw on top of tacos later in the week or something like that. But um, I like to have a lot. I would rather have extra cheese than not enough. Gotta have all the good cheese. Okay, so we're just gonna repeat the layer.
Okay, we are looking good. You can see there's lots of liquid going on here. So I'm gonna plug in my blender. If you hear noises, my daughter is emptying the dishwasher in the background. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna just try this out. Oh yeah, we're in, in good shape to blend this. Okay, I'm realizing right off the bat that we have a lot of liquid going on. And instead of cooking this and cooking this and cooking this once I have it blended, I'm actually going to take a dipper and I'm going to scoop some of the liquid out so that it's a little thicker and not super runny. Okay, between these two, I've actually removed half a gallon of liquid from the fruit, and this is not gonna go to waste. Either my children will drink it as juice this week, or um, we will put it in smoothies, we'll use it somehow. But I don't want it to, I just didn't want it to affect the outcome or the texture of the berry sauce, and Last time I made this, I really cooked it down, so this is gonna help the cook time as well. I'm so glad that I pulled off that extra liquid because this consistency is about perfect. I mean, it looks like an applesauce type consistency. I actually turned my heat back a little bit. I wanna keep this hot. And what I'm going to do, cause there are some, some blueberries and chunks of apple and that kind of thing in here, is as I'm putting it into my jars before I put it in the canner, I'm actually gonna just dump some into my high powered blender, blend it, pour it into the jar. So it's gonna get one more good blend, but it's mixed together well enough. And we did do a test taste. I had my daughters come in, we all tasted it. And I'm thrilled to say that the flavor combination is perfect. It's not too tart and we don't have to add extra sugar to it at all. Which the cherries that were in it, the ones from Costco were a sweet cherry. And then the cherries I froze last year, I don't know, I can't remember the exact variety, but they're kind of a yellow and pink cherry. And they are considered more like a medium. They're like halfway between a sweet cherry and halfway and a tart cherry. So it worked out really well. I'm so glad that we are able to do a 100% fruit sauce, that's what we're calling it. Um, and I will be doing the second half of all that you saw tomorrow, um, but I wanted to get one half knocked out. So I'm actually gonna put the lid on this so that it stays nice and hot because I have another project I wanna squeeze in here before we start loading this into the canner and finish up getting dinner started. And that is growing lettuce inside, doing some indoor planting of lettuce we are going to switch over to our sunroom slash dining room area, and I'll show you what I'm planning to do. All right, off of our kitchen here is our dining room area that's also a sunroom. As you can see, I've got some house plants in here, and I've grown different types of plants in this room at different times. And right here, I have a cart where I've got a bunch of little house plants that we've acquired in the last little while. Um, somebody gave my daughter some plants and then we have bought some in the last month or so. But what we're gonna work on is this here. I got these from Amazon. We are going to move all of this out on to the screened in porch to do the, the planting and the project because I think it's gonna be a bit too messy here. But I just thought I would show you where they're going to be sitting so you have a good idea. This room gets lots of sun all winter long. Um, sometimes it can be hot actually because 
it is almost like a little greenhouse. As you can see, this is such a great example. In the afternoon, the sun just really streams in and it's so delightful in the dead of winter here in central Pennsylvania when you need a little bit of vitamin D sun in your life. So I thought that these would work out great. I have some little carts that are out on my deck that were with my patio garden this summer that I had tomato plants on that I thought that way if we want to move the lettuce towers around, we wanna put them on this side, we can do that. Um, I'll get into these planters a bit more when we head out on the screened in porch. All right, I think this project will go a bit better out here. And don't mind my poor ferns back here. I haven't had time to take them down. We've already had our first frost, so my fun outdoor stuff is kind of coming to an end, but we're gonna move some of the greenery inside. So actually Dollar Tree has planters very similar to these, and if you can find them, it's a great alternative. Um, but there was a couple things I liked about this pack, and that was that it had a dish, so that way I can do this indoors, and it's no problem. And it also has these drainage trays for each of the layers, which I feel is very important when you have indoor plants going on. And I felt like these are just a bit sturdier than the ones from Dollar Tree. I've seen the ones from Dollar Tree before. And you can pick your color if you want to. They have a couple different colors of these planters. So we are going to fill these with dirt, stack them, all of that. Along with this set came this really cute, small, garden tool set, which I thought was really adorable and perfect for what I'm about to do is some miniature gardening. And we'll be able to use this to help with each layer of the dirt. So I'm gonna get the dirt and I have a spray bottle here. I'm going to um, kind of water my dirt, dig it up, and then as I plant my lettuce seeds, I'm going to spray them down with some water. And I just got some loose leaf lettuce. You don't really wanna do head lettuce in the indoor style pots, I guess, is what I'm looking for, um, because they don't have enough space. But if you do loose leaf lettuce, it works out perfectly. I will keep you guys updated on this little venture I'm doing with some indoor gardening in the next few videos, in the next few weeks, and let you know how it's going. So let's plant some lettuce. All right, so I'm pretty happy with my little lettuce tower. Like I said, I will keep you guys updated. And what we're gonna do is every day for the next couple of days, we're gonna spray the soil so that we have sprouts and then we'll thin the sprouts and hopefully get some great indoor lettuce all winter long. 
Alrighty, so I got the lettuce planted and I have a special guest here with me. Like I said, my parents were are here um, for dinner this evening and then in and out this week as they have their other events with camp mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. in Pennsylvania. And mom is gonna help me make the seven layer salad. She's gonna tell you how she did it and how we ate it growing up. This is something that was a favorite in our house. It's something I love. It's something that my husband really loves. And so I'm just gonna let her kind of explain. And then she's also gonna give a little update on the how they've been doing and whatnot. Cause I feel like if we do this, you're, I'm gonna get lots of comments below asking how they're doing. <laughs> so I think we'll just do a little chatty making the salad. So um, yeah, do you wanna start off with how you're doing before we make the salad? <laughs> Or as you're doing? <laughs> I can. We're doing, we're doing good. And since the hurricane came through, um, we had Hurricane Milton. Uh, yeah. We were so extremely blessed that camp only had a few branches down and leaves blowing around. A few trees would have been blowing around, um, blowing over. But other than that, um, we did, we did very well. We were in buildings that would have been able to handle winds up to um, yeah. hurricane. You did have to take shelter. Oh yes, yeah. Mike For and I the... did have to because we we live in a double wide, and so we ended up going down to camp to be with the rest of them. Anyway, so uh, yeah, so down there instead of snow days or blizzard days, you have hurricane days and hurricane parties. <laughs> as as people that are watching that are from Florida, yes. probably know. <laughs> Absolutely. So so some of the staff that are much younger than me, that are more like Addie's age and younger than Addie in their twenties, they all. Um, we're looking forward to the party, the the um, games. Sort of getting like yes. shut in, huh? The shut in, <laughs> the shut in feel. So, um, but other than that, like, yeah, we are doing very well. Um, very blessed and absolutely miss my children. And grandchildren. And grandchildren. Just really do miss them. But I know that this is where God's called us to um, and what we're to be doing right now. So, and we are being blessed by that. Yeah, and we do so. get a lot back and forth, which is nice. We do, we do. All right, so we are going to put the next, so I put the, the salad, the lettuce in here. Mm -hmm. Corey needs through. <laughs> we will be putting peas in this. <laughs> yes, we're putting peas in it, babe. <laughs> he is, peas will be going in this. <laughs> he, the, him and my dad are out grilling the steaks. Like I said earlier, we're having steaks and, okay. Um, so mm -hmm. the obviously with the name of seven layer salad, this is this is considered kind of a retro dish, is it not? Like it's something that would have been made in the sixties and seventies. Uh, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's something which as a lot of the like old um, Mennonite dishes mm -hmm. are. I was just mm -hmm. talking with somebody about um, mm -hmm. the pink, like red hot uh, Applesauce. Oh, the, now, my book study. We were talking about that. Yes, and the getting, applesauce salad. Oh, that yeah. is so good. That was I, like one of my favorite yes, things. Yes, and they, um, some of the younger girls in my book study, were just having a fit that you would put the red hot candies into mm. applesauce, and mm -hmm. they just thought that was so odd. So, anyways, but I, but I grew up eating that at my grandparents, and mom would make it on mm -hmm. occasion and things. So I'm noticing that a lot of the um, Mennonite background as mm -hmm. my mom grew up Mennonite mm -hmm. and we would have been a form of mm -hmm. when I was really little. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them seem to be like old recipes that are just mm -hmm. kept going. So anyways, let's get back to our seven layer salad here. So what would you put next if you um, were making it? I probably would put the peas next. The peas. Okay, so I cooked some, you can go ahead. Um, I cooked some peas and I actually just ran them under cold water. And, um, but you can put them on frozen, right? You can just do them right so, out. So the way I would have done this, um, I would have made this the night before, the day before. Okay? Yes, and I generally try to, it just, this was the way ske the schedule worked. <laughs> we're in a big fat hurry, okay? Yeah, we're in a big fat hurry. <laughs> we're showing you how to do it in a hurry. Yes, yes. So done ahead. You would put the lettuce in. Yeah, you can put in frozen peas is and that, they won't fall. Is this too much a little bit? No, this here will yeah. be here, right here. Okay. Um, put the frozen peas in. They will fall overnight. Um, and then the next thing I probably would do is um, do the do the eggs. And I will tell you, there is another layer that Addie doesn't have in here that I had put in. Okay. That remember what Jaron likes so much? No, what is that? Raisins. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So that He loves the raisins because That's whenever, my brother. He's talking about Um 
because the raisins give, when you bite into it, it gives a bite of sweet. Yes, and, yes. Um, and my husband does not like raisins, so, so that's probably why I swapped it out for the tomato, because you probably would not have done tomato. I did some, okay. just depend on, there again, this can be your choice, and it doesn't need to be seven layers. I mean, shoot, if you can think up nine, go for it. Yeah. Um, this is yeah. basically just layering it up, and, um, and enjoying the um, sauce that goes on it. Okay, and then okay. the tomato, you can put the tomato on. And see, I would have topped mine off with a parsley also, just okay. for garnish. Okay, Yeah. on How top of like the cheese and stuff. Yeah, however yeah. you want it to look in the end. Yeah, this is a dish that is often brought to like potlucks and things mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. The cheese so, goes on top of the sauce, it right? It does, okay. it does. Um, I'm gonna put this, a little bit of this here. Yeah, and, and I do a lot of bacon. That's something our family really likes is the bacon. I mean, who doesn't who doesn't like bacon? Oh, bacon I know. And as we were better. told before we did this, um, there needs to be a bacon in every bite. So, <laughs> and Corey, guess who said that? Corey was giving his instructions. <laughs> okay, so let's make the sauce. And so we have mayo here. Would you have normally used Miracle Whip? in your yes. in your house okay yes. we don't buy miracle whip because again it's just a preference with our family mm -hmm. um but growing up mom would have done mm -hmm. miracle whip instead of the mayo so there's one thing we missed in this and that is the lettuce that's in here it's one head one head of lettuce okay and so it would not be a half a head or it would not be two heads Okay. And you can put this out in a nine by 13 pan. Yes, I just chose to do it in this bowl because it, it looked nice. Um, but yes, I, we could do it in a nine by 13 right. pan. Right, so then when you dig down into it, you've got your sauce. I see what you're saying. I'll tell you, in the past I've had problems with making sure I had enough of it. Okay. So about two and a half cups. All right. And then the mustard. Okay, um, this is just yellow mustard. And you're gonna throw in about a table, a teaspoon. Okay, so very light. Very light on the mustard. And you and can taste it. I mean, I mm -hmm. say that with broccoli salad too mm -hmm. when I'm making yes. any type of mayo-based yes. uh, dressing. You can just taste it as you go. Mm -hmm. So at this point, you would take your, ma your mayonnaise mustard mix and put it out on the top of your salad and then you would sprinkle sugar across it. Mm -hmm. And this is where, um, whether you like things really sweet or whether you like it just sweetened enough. Mm -hmm. So on a, on a regular recipe, I think it's, it's like two tablespoons of sugar that you would sprinkle across. And then you would let this set overnight. So this is a make ahead salad, or it is a make in a hurry salad. And by doing it in, in a hurry, <laughs> and like we need it right now, um, I'm actually going to use liquid stevia you can and also just a tiny bit of this. Yeah, I was gonna suggest that you could also use um, maple syrup. That's yes. another another yes. thing you could use if you aren't doing it overnight mm -hmm. to where the sugar would dissolve mm -hmm. and all of that. So, so do you show licking licking stuff? Too? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do show licking stuff. <laughs> there. What do you think? <laughs> uh, I think it needs a tad bit more. I decided that when I lick something on my videos, oh. nobody else that's watching is gonna eat it. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> My family's eating it. <laughs> exactly. And we know that you're going to lick your fingers at home anyway. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay. Did you say that's good? Did you say a little more? A tiny bit more. Yeah, I was going to say. Also, um, I would have made it not with mayo. I would have made it with um, Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip. And that's, that's sweeter. And that's sweeter. Than this. So. Yeah. Yep, makes sense, makes sense. However she wants to. Okay, all right, so we're ready to roll. So you just take in little blobs, kind of? Is that how you're um, gonna do it? Yeah, kind of-ish, because- And then we can use this to kind of, to cover it. I'm hoping this is enough. Can it's okay. We'll just not dig down too deep <laughs> into the bowl. That's what Okay, we can I'm gonna do just too. do it this way. Sure, go right ahead. And see I'll more. get out of your way. Give you some elbow space. Seems great. <laughs> Alrighty. And what I used to do a lot is I had one of those truffle, is that the right word? 
the truffle uh, mm -hmm. dishes and it kind of came down and you could see the layers in it a little bit better. I was hoping to see them through this bowl, but I think it kind of spread them out mm -hmm. a little bit to where you couldn't it see did. them quite as well. So depending on if your family likes a lot of mayo, a lot of sauce, or a lot of dressing, yeah. a lot of draw dressing mm -hmm. on your salad is gonna determine how thick you make this. Now, you can probably find this recipe somewhere along the way in Pinterest or somewhere. Yeah, or I will, if I don't type out this exact one, mm -hmm. I will leave one that is exactly like it from mm -hmm. Pinterest in the description box like I do yeah. everything else. All right, so top, how we top this off. And then to top this off. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting all the real real today. <laughs> okay, all right, to top um, it off, the sheet to cheese I shredded earlier. Okay, but I, I would go with this here so that it marinates into the Sauce. Into the sauce. Or the dressing. The, the dressing. dressing. The dressing. <laughs> and you get that going on sort of just a little bacon. bit more. Okay. Would be my my thinking. Mm -hmm. behind it. Okay. And then top it off with the cheese. Yeah. That's my, like, anytime I think of it at, like, a family gathering or mm -hmm. at a church uh, potluck or, mm -hmm. uh, what what did we usually call it? It wasn't potluck. It well, was... Even a family... You said a family gathering. <laughs> yeah, a family gathering. Um, there's a another carry in. A carry yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. You know, one of those where they tell you to bring something. They tell you to bring a dish, and generally they mm -hmm. want that dish full mm -hmm. of something. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a great, a great thing to do. Yeah. All right, friends. Our day is winding down. We had a great evening with my parents and just being able to see them, share a meal together and have some laughs and catch up a little bit. It was good. So we are now going to tackle canning the berry sauce. And like I said earlier, if you want to um, blend it, kind of do a second blend on it, um, just to make sure that all the little bits and pieces, I can actually see some whole pieces of fruit in here. So this is nice and hot. So we're gonna have hot going into jars, into hot water, and then we're gonna bring it all up to a boil. And this will be water bath canned, not pressure canned. Um, and you only have to water bath can it for 25 minutes. So it does not take long. It's the same as applesauce. That's how I'm treating it. And it'll be a quick, easy, preservation project and we're gonna have lots of servings of fruit out of this and another thing I can do with this that's really cool is I have a dehydrator and all I have to do is open up a jar of this fruit mixture and I can make fruit leather right out of this um, very easily I don't even have to blend anything up it's just ready to go and to be made into fruit leather that can be I'm gonna grab a bowl for this that can be rolled up and put into lunches or just had as a sweet treat. All right, so I just put a jar funnel on my jar and this is gonna be really convenient. I didn't even blend it that long, just enough to make sure that everything is all smooth. All right, so I'm just gonna wipe the rims to make sure there isn't any of the berry sauce 
on the rims. Make sure everything is clean. If I was doing something that had a fat in it, I would do some white vinegar on my rag here and wipe it with that, but um, because I'm just making sure that there's nothing sticky on there. And then we're gonna go ahead and put our lids on and our rings on. Make sure that they are finger tight. I know that most of you know a lot of this information, but there are people out there learning how to can. And so I like to just reiterate these things. So when you turn it finger tight, you just go till about, it's about tight and then take your fingers and I just tighten it until it stops. I don't force it. You could go a little bit further. You don't wanna do that. That's how you can get um, jars that don't seal. So you just wanna make sure that you've got a nice finger tight on there. So when you see a canning recipe and you see that it says to make sure they're on finger tight, that is exactly what it means. I'm gonna put these into the canner. Again, being reminded of some canning basics. So this is what is called a rolling boil, and this is when you set your timer. So it just reached this good rolling boil. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my timer back here for 25 minutes. And, woo. and um, then once it goes off, I just, take them either out of the water or I'll turn the water off and then take them out of the water depending on um, if I'm going to put a new batch in and if the things I'm putting in here is hot. That was a little bit of extra information you probably didn't need to know right now. But um, so we will let this at a good rolling boil. I do have my burner on really high back here so I am gonna turn it down because it will still stay at a rolling boil even if it's turned back just a little. Um, so we're gonna do that, and then once the timer goes off, we'll take them out and hope for every single jar to seal for us. Alrighty, it's getting late, and I am almost finished with the berry sauce. I did one load back here, and then I got six in the second load. So all together, I got 13 quarts of berry sauce for today, and like I said, that was half of the berries and other fruit that I'm going to make into berry sauce. Very happy about that. I'll finish the second half tomorrow. Speaking of tomorrow, I'm setting myself up for success. First thing in the morning, tomorrow morning, I have been wanting to do more dried beans. Um, it's just so nice to be able to can your own. It's so incredibly easy. That's why I thought, hey, I'm gonna show you guys what I'm doing. We'll wake up together tomorrow morning and I'll show you how easy it is to complete this little project. One of the things I love about this is it's not in a metal can, which is a plus. Um, you know what water was used. You know what beans were used. You probably have a better idea of the origin of the beans and you know what type of salt was used in your beans. <laughs> so all of that being said, I am doing two pressure canner loads worth of jars here. This is just a really breakdown easy way to do it instead of doing a big bucket of beans. I've done that before. You guys have seen me do that when I do my barbecue beans. So what I did here is I did uh, 16 because I can fit 16 pints into my pressure canner. So I did 16 pints of black beans. Our little doggy is pacing. I'm not sure why, <laughs> but 16 pints of black beans. And then we're going to do 16 or hopefully if I have enough of the great northern beans and what we're gonna do is I put around a cup of dried beans into each pint and then I'm going to fill them with water and I'm going to just take my lid not the ring just the lid and set it on top of here we're gonna let everything sit and soak overnight 
In the morning, I'm just gonna take these off. I'm only putting these on as like a dust cover or you know, just to make sure nothing else gets in these um, while they're soaking overnight. In the morning, I'm going to drain into each individual jar, just dump the jar into a strainer over the sink, rinse the beans, put the beans back into the jar and fill the jar with water. It just helps me to break down having the right amount of dry beans into each jar, no matter how much they expand or don't expand through the soaking process. So I'm going to finish measuring my great northern beans. I did all of my black beans and then I'm going to fill everything with water, cover the lids, pull my jars out. I'm gonna head to bed and I will see you guys in the morning. Good morning, friends. The sun is just starting to come up. However, I've been up for a couple of hours just working on a few things, getting the berry sauce to the sinks to wash up all of the jars and get ready to store them. I also drained off one half of my beans here because this is one canner load and this is the other canner load. And all I did was dump them into the mesh strainer over the sink, the beans, and then rinse them really well, and then put them back in the jar, fill them, pick out anything that looked discolored or odd, just making sure that um, we've got the good ones in here. And also, I wanted to mention that I did actually remove some beans, a whole cup for the regular mouth pint jars, I think is a little bit too much. I was following a recipe and I couldn't remember the last time I did it, how much um, dry beans to put in. So I did remove some of them. I'll just do another load um, after I'm done with both of these two, but I just wanted to mention that. And a lot of it is just gonna go down, come down to common sense in the fact of um, your beans have expanded, you know about what they look like cooked, we know what, you know, your black beans and other things, the size of them. So you have to kind of make the decision, all right, they're almost to the full size and then I'm going to add a little bit more water, basically. So I probably have about an inch of water over top of the soaked beans in here. So what I'm going to do, let's take another sip of coffee because the coffee is needed this morning, especially after yesterday. And I'm going to put about a half teaspoon of salt into my jars. Um, and I've seen lots of different recipes when it comes to beans, people putting in chopped onion and other little flavorings and seasonings and things like that. That's something I've never done but is definitely doable um, if you say want to use them specifically for burritos or in beans and rice and that kind of a thing. So you can personalize it as far as when it comes to seasonings. Now I'm pressure canning these. Um, I've never done it water bathed, but I'm sure that there's recipes out there for it to, to do it water bathed but I am almost can almost guarantee it would be like a three hour water bath, like meat or something like that, because there's essentially no acidity <laughs> in these. And that plays a part in the science part of doing canning. Okay, so now that I have my salt in each one, I'm just going to, I'm actually gonna grab a paper towel and I'm just gonna wipe the rims just to make sure no salt got on to the rims. And then we will put our lids on. And the nice thing is for those of you that are newer to canning, you probably have seen people do it both ways, but the instructions now on the ball lids is you don't have to boil them. Um, when I was a little girl and my mom did canning, she would boil the lids to soften the rubber part on the lid. Um, but they say that you can do it without, and I've had plenty of good seals through the last couple of years without boiling the lids. 
So today is another busy day for us. And this is obviously before we start school and all of that. And it's kind of nice to get up and get things done. Most of the household is still sleeping besides a little one that was up not feeling well. So she's in lying on the couch right now watching Andy Griffiths <laughs> before our day starts. And my husband's already been up and out the door. And there's just something about getting up early. I'm not very good at getting up early. I would love to hear your tips in the comments on getting up earlier because I just get out. It's like since we actually visited my parents in Florida um, about a month ago, like I said earlier in this video, um, I've been a, kind of thrown off on my early mornings. So I'd love to hear your tips on how to get back into an early morning schedule when you've kind of gotten thrown out of your early morning schedule. <laughs> All right, so with the pressure canner, we are going to be canning these um, for an hour or 60 to 65 minutes. And we're gonna be canning them at 10 pounds pressure. So um, follow the instructions with your specific pressure canner because some of them are different and you would just wanna follow the instructions to do 10 pounds pressure for about an hour and actually that also depends on the altitude of where you live so double check all of that and you can find that info out online as far as if you need to make any adjustments for that all right so anytime that i can double up on some work in the kitchen i definitely try to do that so since i'm waiting for my canner to heat up I am just going to go ahead and mix up some of the chocolate chip cookies that we love, some of the cookie dough. And we're gonna make a little, one of my favorite freezer meal prep projects, and that is just freezing cookie dough. I actually have a book study this evening, so some of this I will probably bake into cookies a little later this afternoon, make the house smell really good. Um, but most of it's going to go on sheets. I'm gonna pre-freeze it on cookie sheets and then I'm going to take the little scoops of cookie dough, put them into gallon sized freezer bags and then we can bake as many cookies as we want to. So my goal is to about five to six times this recipe. So I'm just gonna dig in and start mixing this together. I'm not gonna go step by step. You all have seen me do this recipe different times but if you wanna try it, it is the best chocolate chip cookie recipe. It's the one my mom always used it's our favorite and I will leave it in the description box below. All right, so I have a tray ready to go into the freezer. These smell so good. 
and I know that you all are going to want to see the end result of the beans, so I'll pop some pictures in here. They are just so convenient for things like hummus, bean dip, soups, taco night, burritos, all of those things. And I'm gonna wrap up today's video. Thank you for, for spending this time with me. And we are about to dive into our school day. I'm glad I knocked out some of these projects this early in the morning. It's something that if you take a little preparation, you can definitely do some food prep, some meal prep, some uh, food preservation in between the cracks, even if you work or you're a homeschool mom like me. And thanks a lot for hanging out with me. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Let me know in the comments what you thought of today's video. I love chatting with you all there and I'll see you all in the next one.